process and basis of accounting is the name of the chapter. The accounting process begins with the identification of the business transactions, which can be measured in terms of money. This is a basic step. We all know this. Whenever a transaction is taking place, this is the first thing we need to identify that whether that is the, the transaction is of economic nature or not, whether the money is involved in that or not. Okay, so that has to be uh, that thing has to be checked. And after that, then these transactions are then recorded uh, in the books of accounts. We know the books of accounts. It may be the journal, uh, it may be the subsidy books, as the case may be. And then we need to classify. And then finally, summarized summarization is done with the help of the preparation of trial balance and the financial statements. When you talk about the financial statements, it will uh, be asking you to prepare the trading PL and the balance sheet as well. The steps involved in the process of accounting are let us go through the steps which are the same as we have learned earlier in chapter number one. First is the identification. Okay, as we are discussing right now, okay, we need to identify the transactions okay, of financial nature. Once the identification is done, we need to prepare the vouchers. Uh, when we were discussing about the term voucher in the second chapter, I told you the voucher and source document are two different things. Right? Source documents are the original documents or, or the evidence of the transactions. And based on the source documents, the vouchers are prepared with the accountant in which the accountant will be specifying the account to be debited and credited. For vouchers again, we'll have some theory in chapter number six. We will learn how the vouchers are prepared. Next is now uh, recording. Once the transactions are identified, the vouchers are prepared. We need to have the recording of the transactions in the books of accounts, right? After recording, we need to have the classification. And for classification process, it is about the posting to ledger. Ledger is we all know that key now it is nothing but a book of accounts in which all the ledger accounts are prepared and balanced at the end of the year for the preparation. That is the next step basically. For the preparation of trial balance and we all know that trial balance lays down the, again the foundation the base for preparing the financial statements which is the next step again uh, when you talk about the preparation of financial statements over here we have trading and pnl account that is first thing as far as class 11 is concerned and uh, second is about the balance sheet so these are the things which we will be going through today in this particular lecture first step the identification monetary terms right as we know that the accounting deals with the transactions which can be measured in terms of money. So we shall restrict ourselves to those transactions only. Any transaction which is not measured in terms of money will not be recorded over here. Also, we know that key, every transaction, every business transaction needs to be well supported, needs to be supported by the documentary evidences. Okay, we know like for various transactions, various documents are available as like for cash purchase and sale like for cash sale we have cash memo for purchase on credit we have purchase invoice for sales on credit we have sales invoice for anything related to the bank when we deposit we have pay and slip and the payment vouchers etc right so these are all the source documents which should be there with us for the uh, you know like uh, as an evidence of the transactions and these documents act as an evidence that the transaction has taken place and as such these are called the source documents the meaning of source document we have discussed it earlier but right on this is a discussion so that like you are able to keep it with you whenever the transaction is taking place second is preparation of vouchers source document ki baat hogi to vouchers to baat hogi hi hogi right vouchers are always in the printed form and on the basis of the source documents basically we prepare the vouchers uh, they are into the printed forms containing the name of the firm column of the date, voucher number and the details of the transaction. And this voucher, uh, basically, uh, the accountant will be writing over here the account which has to be debited and credited. So the voucher is basically divided into the debit and the credit column with the amount columns, right? And also we will have a column of the signature where the clerk who prepares it will sign along with the clerk who also the authorized signatory person will be there so that person also will have to sign so that key it becomes a valid document in the business entity we have a format over here we can see that the name and address okay name address and this voucher number and date okay this is what i say the first part of the voucher we are going to learn this the preparation of vouchers in the sixth chapter right we will have some transactions based on that we will be asked to prepare the vouchers so 
basically i divide the voucher into three parts first is the name address voucher number and the date we all can see that over here the third part we'll talk about the signatories the signature of the accountant can be seen and the manager also is required okay so this is a third part the so first and third part will be of two to three lines but the most important part is over here right this is the second part wherein like this is the reason for preparing the voucher we can see that the account which has been debited because this is a debit voucher to so be how only debit we may have a credit voucher wherein like we only have a credit column and yes if it is a non cash transaction so then we'll have debit and credit both the things mentioned over here correct for cash transactions we'll have just one term that is debit or credit but for non cash we'll have both the terms debit and credit over here the which account is debited which account is credited these things are mentioned over here and that's why this is considered as the most important part of the voucher we'll learn all these things after doing chapter number 5 in chapter number 6 we'll learn this right so this is what is about the voucher and because this is a debit voucher you can see that what are the amount is there 10000 is amount so on the left hand side we can see this received rupees 10000 only and because it's a cash voucher the debit voucher we will be writing the details over here okay and we'll ask the person who is receiving the cash okay uh, to say sign on this revenue stamp affixed over here uh, revenue stamp has to be affixed if the amount exceed rupees 5000 right if the amount exceed rupees 5000 any transaction in the receipt is we should the so revenue stamp has to be there how many of you have seen this revenue stamp which color it is like and how much is the value of this revenue uh, stamp that it is red pink take okay, a pink in color and the value you need to find the value also 1 rupees that's very correct okay 1 rupee is the value if any one of you can uh, bring it in the next class so that like even do, i do how i do how but wo kahan rakha hai maine abhi mujhe dhoondna padega to i'll not be uh, sparing that time but i do how in the next class i'll keep it with me and i also expect one or two of you like should bring it in the class right so that we can show this is a revenue stamp right okay so this is what is a formula voucher we are going to learn the numerical part of this the preparation of this how how is the account to be debited and how do we decide that the account is to be debited and credited all these things will be learned slowly and gradually you can see that the vouchers are prepared from the source documents and they give direction as to which accounts are debited and credited so this debit and credit decision is taken basically on the rules of accounts right and the documentary evidences are attached with each voucher and so that they are verifiable at any point of time in case of petty expenses like payment of tonga fare auto rickshaw fare wagar jo bhi hai and coolie charges etc from the business point of view such expenses are possible in such cases the source document is not available right and that is why in such cases the voucher itself will act as a source document because every firm has its own vouchers in the printed forms right the vouchers are kept in serial order and kept in a file for the future reference and the verification by the auditor we know like at the end of the year auditors are going to be there to verify the books of accounts so they will be need of the source document and the vouchers so they are pro uh, properly maintained and uh, kept in a file the next one is recording of entries in the books of original entry whenever you talk about the books of original entry you have to remember that it can be a journal or it can be the subsidiary books okay journal is just one book but it will be followed by the small business entities and if the size of the organization grows and if there are there is a huge amount of other or the volume of the transaction is big then in that case uh, yes we need to go with the subsidiary books all the transactions are recorded from the vouchers in the books of the accounts in which the transaction is recorded for the first time and that is why they are known as the books of original entry journal is one of the books of original entry in which all the transactions are recorded date wise in the chronological order and as per double entry system we are going to learn this part right when the volume of the transaction increases with the increase in the size of the business in that case journal is further subdivided into several books called as subsidiary books i'm sure like we all remember those six subsidiary books very commonly used purchase sale purchase it and sale it and cash book and journal proper all cash transactions are recorded in cash book 
all credit purchases are recorded in purchases purchases book likewise all the credit sales are recorded in sales book and so on other books which are recorded uh, which are used the subscription books purchase it in sales it in and also we have bill receivable and bill payable but these two books are not in much use and not discussed in the syllabus also now and the journal proper recording of transactions in the subscription books is called the system of bookkeeping and the system makes the process of clear uh, classification of transactions easier now next step once we are done with the recording of the transactions in the journal or in subsidiary books we need to have ledger and posting is something the process of transferring the amount from journal to ledger right it can be journal to ledger it can be from subsidiary books to ledger all the transactions are recorded in the journal or in the subsidiary books and then they are to be transferred to the respective accounts in the ledger we know like ledger is a book of accounts respective accounts you are talking about from journal the transactions which are related to mohan let us classify under one head one account in the ledger right sales at one place purchases at one place so that it becomes very easy for the business entity to know the balance of each and every single account okay the process basically as i told you the process of transferring the amount the entries from journal to our subscription books to the ledger is called posting this will be one marker very very important term important question all the transactions are classified while posting them in the ledger as i was giving examples of mohan sales purchase salary etc all the transactions pertaining to the same party are posted in the account of the same party in chronological order that is date wise this has to be checked when we will be into the process of the ledger posting at that time also students do make a mistake they don't do it uh, date wise who account wise karte so that becomes very wrong process right thus separate accounts are opened for each customer each supplier for each asset liability expense income etc all such accounts are prepared in the ledger separate accounts are opened in the ledger for each expense and income as well and the book in which the above stated accounts are opened and kept is called ledger it is called the principal book of accounts again a one marker question okay journal original book of account the primary book of accounts subsidiary books the same thing the original book of accounts a uh, ledger is the principal book of accounts the reason is very clear because with that to the ledger only we are going to prepare the trial balance and the financial statements which is going to be the next step ledger posting enables us to know the amount of the total purchase total sales and the amount due to the uh, creditors amount due from the debtors individually right after that it's a preparation of a trial balance trial balance is a statement again uh, which will be showing you the balances of all the various ledger accounts prepared in the ledger any ledger account which is having a debit balance will be placed in the debit column and any account which has a credit balance will be placed in the credit column right the format of uh, the trial balance is something like this okay we have almost 1 2 3 4 columns over here you are going to write the name of the accounts uh, this is lf in which on which page in ledger we have prepared this account we can write those page numbers over here and over here it's a debit column and a credit column so if any of the account suppose mohan account is there mohan account has a debit balance so it will be mentioned in the debit column sohan account has a credit balance so sohan account ka balance will be there in the credit column this is how the process of uh, preparing the trial balance continues and uh, at the end when we have transferred all the balances okay when we have transferred all the balances from the ledger account to the trial balance at the end these this total of the trial balance has to be same if this is 1 lakh so this needs to be 1 lakh itself the debit and the credit so this help us the trial balance help us to check the arithmetical accuracy of the business transaction which simply means that he the business entity or the accountant okay has been ensuring that whatever amount is debited the same amount is credited as well after posting the recorded transactions in the ledger all the accounts are balanced right and closed at the end of the accounting period or even earlier as well a trial balance is prepared by placing all the accounts having a debit balance on the debit side and placing all the credit balances on the credit side that is what i told you right now and the total of debit side right the total of debit side should agree with the total of credit side of the trial balance as a accounts are kept on dual aspect concept agreement of the trial balance right agreement of both the sides of the trial balance ensures the 
arithmetical accuracy arithmetical accuracy ka matlab maine bataya ki this simply ensures ki what are the amount has has been debited equal amount the credit effect has been given it does not claim that ki like there is no error we can't agreement of travel is just let us know the arithmetical accuracy of the business transactions and yes if there is a difference in the trial balance okay suppose the total of debit is 1 lakh the total of credit is 90000 10000 ka mistake hai it's a huge mistake right so we should take some steps to locate the errors and rectify them so that we are able to prepare the financial statements which is the next step in the process of accounting right so this has to be taken care of and yes what are the difference comes in the trial balance we are going to use suspense account we'll learn this again while doing the numericals in the future the next step is about the preparation of the financial statements whenever you talk about the financial statements it will always deal with the preparation of trading and trading and pnl account and balance sheet trading and profit and loss account is prepared to know the operating performance of the business entity and uh, balance sheet is known a uh, balance sheet is prepared to know the financial performance of the business entity with the help of the trial balance we cannot know the profit or loss so trial balance merely let us know about the about the balance of each and every ledger account and just confirms that the recorded transactions are correctly posted this is what is a surety that we get from the trial balance which is not enough for the business entity it fails to point out the operating performance and the financial soundness this is what is the reason of accounting basically right we would like to know at the end of the year the operating performance and the financial soundness and for this purpose we need to prepare we need to prepare the financial statements and financial statements are basically prepared to know the profitability and the position of assets and liabilities of the business entity financial statements includes we very well know now it includes the trading and pnl account which will reveal the profitability position and the second part is balance sheet which will reveal the financial soundness of the business entity 